The military terms of the Treaty of Versailles focused on making Germany weak. Germany had been the major military force of the First World War, which meant that the other countries, the big three, wanted to make sure that war would not happen again. So to stop war with Germany being involved, they wanted Germany's army severely weakened. So firstly, they decided to go for the navy. The navy means your ships in the sea. And this actually was where the um, most of the world's fighting could actually really occur. You could transport across the world. It, you could affect trade and you could affect food supplies. It was very important in the 1900s. And the thing is, Britain had the biggest navy in the world and Germany had actually threatened that claim in the early 80, late 1800s, sorry. So um, Britain made the case that Germany's navy needs to be limited. In fact, it was limited down to 15,000 men, 1,500 officers, and only six battleships total. Now, that limitation means that Germany cannot transport as much stuff around the world. It means that uh, Germany could be attacked by the sea, by Britain, and completely destroyed instantly. It's not a great look. As well as that, Germany's military, its army, was limited as well. I'd say it was constricted instead. See, the army in Germany used to be 1.9 million men. That is a lot of people whose jobs depended on being in the army. They literally did it as their lifehood, their career. And the army was then given a restriction. It was limited to 100,000 men and a thing called conscription was banned. Now, if you imagine 1.9 million men being shortened down to 100,000, if you can imagine how many people have now been made unemployed. On top of that, conscription basically means hiring people into the army or forcibly hiring people into the army, which, again, this is banned. They cannot get more people into their army, men on the field, should we say. Not great. That's, again, if Germany is to be attacked, they don't have enough men to defend themselves like they did before. And then lastly, an air force. Airplanes were quite new. Uh, bombers were the only real thing they had, dropping bombs on people. But the thing is, Germany was not allowed an air force. It wasn't allowed to have any planes whatsoever. This meant that if Germany was attacked by a plane, Germany couldn't do anything to defend itself against a plane. Not great. So Germany has now been weakened to the point that if anyone was to attack Germany, Germany's almost set to lose. And Germany's been made, should we say, more unemployed people in Germany. Germany is now uh, threatened by other countries much more. It's gone from, should we say, a powerful country to a weak one. And the thing is, the people of Germany saw their military as a point of pride. Prior to World War I, Germany was, should we call, a militaristic country. It loved its army. It was proud. There were military parades. Uh, we, you could say Britain is a militaristic country. We celebrate what was called a military tattoo. They would have a big celebration of their military. And now what is there to celebrate? Bit rubbish, isn't it? So you need to know the key bits. Why were the military terms harsh on Germany? What happened to the army, the navy, the air force? But there's one last one that's not on my screen, the Rhineland. This is a weird one because it doesn't sound like a normal word. But the Rhineland, the area between Germany and France by the River Rhine, was demilitarized. There was no army allowed there. It still was German land. People who lived there were still German, but there was no army allowed there. If you imagine it like a hole in a, in a piece of armour, Germany could defend all it liked, but it had to leave a giant hole that France could march through. You need to know the questions and answers to all of those sections, but I think you've got the gist of it. Military terms of the Treaty of Versailles. Off you go. Revise it. Good luck.